our server saying hi. Uh, I'm Dafna, as in Balk uh, said, Dafna Mordechai. Currently, I'm a deep learning compiler engineer. Um, I've been working in C and C++ in the past uh, 15 years in the industry. Um, I also really love technology, and I love the fact that specifically, you know, in tech, there's a lot of meetups and conferences and a lot of knowledge sharing. I'm, and I'm, I'm very active in this field. Uh, I'm, I've been doing mentoring for public speaking, and I'm speaking myself in uh, conferences and, and meetups. Uh, I also uh, do mentoring for tech blogging, so I'm really into all of that. Uh, so I'm super excited to, you know, to speak to the speakers, and uh, that's a fun event for me too. What uh, what did I plan for you today? So we'll talk in brief about the public speaking skill set. I bet a lot of you have a lot of experience, so you can add on to the things that I have to say. But we'll do that briefly, and then the main part of the talk is going to be about slide crafting tools and the experience that I had with some examples from my own presentations and exactly I'm going to explain how I did the things that I think that are nice and helpful and uh, and and creative and fun to do with slideshows. At the end I'm go also going to go over some tips and tricks. Some of them are very known, some of them maybe not, some of them I learned along the way, the way and they helped me so I am happy to share that. So that's the agenda for today. And I'll start with the obvious, like public speaking is not one skill. It's a set of skills that, you know, not all of us are brilliant at all of it. Some people are really great at, at all of it, but you can um, try to bisect this thing into pieces and see that um, maybe we can do improvement in different parts of this skill set. Obviously, the first thing you need to know is the content and the knowledge, whatever you want to um, teach and share with the audience like you can do without that but that's not enough uh, they, they are a lot of great professionals that are not so good at teaching because teaching abilities is something a bit different than just knowing whatever it is that you want to teach i see that a bit like uh, having a beginner's mind you know maybe like you know from the, this term from like zen buddhism it's about knowing what your audience doesn't know yet and like to, to see what you can do to like um to close this gap. So one thing is to know what you know, and the other is to know how to teach. That's a different thing. And we can get better at that too. Obviously, uh, in opposite to like podcasting or even tech blogging, the slides are more important in here. I think that in a lot of conferences, people don't have the best slides. And sometimes people don't pay a lot of attention to that. And I can also say from my own experience that sometimes it can take a lot of time to prepare slides and not in every conference and not for, not for every talk, you necessarily want to put all the time into that. But it is an additional skill. And if your slides is stunning and brilliant, I think it can uh, you know, give you some confidence that you're giving something to the audience even without saying a word. And the last thing is the performance, right? Like eventually you need to go on a stage. There are a lot of people, uh, public speaking is stressful. You can do a few things to be better at the performance itself. So the main thing we're going to talk about is the slide crafting, but obviously, you know, it's it's not one single thing. So where do we begin? Um, I think what is most important before you start is to have the outline. Now, obviously, since you already got in to the conference, you needed to hand in some outline and you know what is the current flow and what you want to talk about. But when you're starting to create a, a, the slide deck, if you want to save yourself some time and to be to see that the result is the way you wanted it to be. It's I think the, the key is that it will be clear, crystal clear for you what it is that you're going to uh, talk about, because if someone is doesn't have a flow that they can say in two minutes, this is what I'm going to talk, be talking about. This is the first part. This is the second part. We're going to go from here to there. You will end up like losing yourself and, and uh, confusing yourself and confusing the, the audience and maybe some of the transitions between the slides won't work so well. So uh, again, maybe it's stating the obvious, but if you know exactly what you're going to do, it's going to be much easier to take the content and um, um, create it into slides. And I think it's very simple. Like I think that as human beings, we have a few very, very basic concepts. One of them is time, one of them is space, and the other is like, you know, you can say miscellaneous, not to go in this time or space. And when we're talking about technical slides, time can be something like 
um, comparing different versions of some technology, okay, like modern C++, what were the changes? You have a, a really good timeline. Uh, time can also be a flow of a function. Like the, the data comes from here, it goes through this and that process and goes out this way. Like the concept is going along the way of, of a, a timeline. The second thing could be going over space. And like in, in tech, it could be like uh, when you take some architecture and you uh, divide it into different parts and you go over them in some ordered way, or it can be against parts of the code, but now not about the flow, more about different types of functions, things like that. And obviously you can have things that are doesn't exactly align into that. Um, a lot of blog posts goes by, uh, you know, five things I learned when I when I started coding C++ with background of Python, things like that. So I think like having like a, a very clear flow can really help um, to organize for yourself and for the listeners. And you can also mix and match. You can say, you know, the first part, we're going to do this and it's going to go along some timeline. And the second time is going to be five tips I learned for this and that. Um, you can see that what I did, you will see that as we go along, but what I did here is like to, to go along the timeline of creating a slideshow. Like what are the things that we need to remember about the topic? How do we start? All the main content is the, uh, like the, the main section is gonna be about the slide crafting. And at the end, you'll see I have some tips. So that's exactly what I did. And that's the way it's clear for me. And then it's clear for everyone else as well. So after we did that, also uh, a good point and is to have some time grid to say, okay, I only have 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to present myself in the first two or three minutes or maybe pre present the subject. And then what am I going to do with the rest of the time? What I found is that when I didn't do that and I didn't have um, some kind of grid, I had too many slides. And then when I was doing dry runs, I saw that I have too much content. Sometimes it was a few days before the conference and then I needed to cut things off and then you need to reorganize things. So if you know beforehand, that's all the time I have, 30 minutes is not that much, 40 minutes is a bit more. Um, and even if you're doing like a lightning talk of, of five minutes, it, it, is, it is even more important to have this grid and then to see that your slides fit in. There's a rule saying uh, it's two minutes per slide. <clears throat> like if you already created slides and you wanna see, okay, so how much time will it take me to talk about it? So like, uh, I have this asterisk here because I was, I think it works for most of the cases, but obviously some slides won't do uh, too many slides. Like this slide was a bit more than that. Uh, and some slides are a bit, are much faster, like transition slides, or sometimes you just wanna give some notion with a really big and nice picture and then it won't work. But in general, I find it uh, helpful. And also another thing is to have like time anchors for when you're going to actually do the talk. Because if you know not only how much time it's going to take, but you also know I need to get to this slide by this and that time. And if you have like three of them or four of them, depending on uh, how long is your talk is, then you can see, you know, I'm, uh, I'm at point one, everything is fine. I'm, I'm getting to, to, I don't know, 20 minutes, but I'm, I'm not where I was supposed to be. So now you can be a bit in, of a hairy or maybe to remember that for the next part, you need to drop some point. I think the most disappointing thing as a speaker and also for the audience is if you promise something in the abstract and then due to wrong, like maybe you didn't do a dry run and some speakers do that, or maybe you didn't um, mind the time online as you were speaking. And then eventually just to say to the audience, oh, we, we didn't do that, all the slides, like it happens once or twice in a, in a conference. And then both the audience feels that you didn't get the content that he wanted and you feel that, you know, you prepared and everything. So if you're gonna have some time anchors to see, like I know that the first section of this presentation needs to be 15 minutes and it's five minutes from now. So I know that I'm on time now and I, I have it. Sometimes I even, when it's Zoom, I sometimes write it down to myself and I just see that, I, that I'm on time. So these are my these are my general rules for like preparing and, and getting to work. And now you're gonna sit down and do your slide deck. So what makes a, a good slide deck or even a perfect one? I think what you need is to remember that the slides have two uh, purposes. Like one of them is for you, that it will help you to teach. It will help you to remember what you wanted to say about each and every point. It will help you with the flow, maybe all the transition slides and things like that. And the other thing is for the audience. 
so it should be fun for them and, and also uh, try to enhance the learning process in any means that you have like you, you can see here that sometimes i highlight things with colors or the general team here is playful and fun and creative because that's like a soft skill and fun presentation so use the, the the means that a slideshow can give you to enhance learning process for the listeners and one of these things and, and i think it's an important uh, point is sometimes to summarize the important points and like to have some break and say okay listen we did this and that until now and this is what you're going to do next not only to do that in the agenda part in the beginning but from time to time to do it along the slides i feel that what it does it takes a cognitive load out of your listeners so they don't have to remember what did we do and to summarize that to themselves they can just say okay you just summarize that for them they know what is going on and they can you know keep on playing with their phone while they're listening um, I'm kidding about the phone, but it happens a lot. I really think that when you summarize things well, then they are more engaged. So it's to, to have a few summary slides, it's, it's like to give an extra thing to your listeners. And all the things on top of all that, you can have the structure and you have everything like that. Eventually, what would make you a really good presenter is if you're going to add something of that from yourself, because people just they, they paid sometimes a lot of money for a conference and they could pay the money for a tutorial or for a book, but they can to listen and to see someone real person standing on the stage <coughs> sharing his own real uh, background, uh, real world cases, things that went well or went wrong. And they're really like a lot of that is really about you. So if you feel comfortable, I don't know, to add things about yourself or to add something funny or to to share some stories from your day to day work. This is the reason people are coming to conferences. And that's like the, you know, the extra spice you can add. OK, so I guess a lot of the things that I said until now, most of you, especially if it's not your first time as speakers in conferences, you know them. I just like put them in Word and slides and now we can go into the, the main part. And I'm going to share some of my examples and some of the tools that I have. Um, before I went to, to study comp computer science, I took a, a graphic design for like a year. I learned it professionally. So just to, to, to have this possibility to share some of this knowledge and to have fun with slides, it's much more fun for me too. So let's, let's do that. First and foremost, and that's the bottom line of everything I'm going to say from now on, if you're not really good and expert with, uh, with slides, and you don't have a lot of time to do things from scratch, I highly, highly recommend using templates. Um, PowerPoints have a lot of templates. I work with Google Slides, which have some basic templates. And then there are like third parties that are providing um, slides as well. Some of them you need to pay for. It's not supposed to be a lot of money. Some of them are just with credits. Like the one that I'm using now is from Slides Carnival. It's very, very popular. All you need to do is to make sure that you know that it's from Science Carnival or to give some credit. Everything has some license, but it's it's a really, really good solution. And now we're going to go into what are the different components for, for having a really good template. So eventually you will be able to create it yourself. But I highly recommend to work at least once, twice, three times with, with, the, with some sort of a template and then to figure it out. And maybe later on, you won't have to do that or you can do things from scratch on your, on your own. But the one thing to remember about um, choosing a template, there are actually a few things to remember, but the, the, the most important one is that, if you know in art, they say the medium is the message, which means the, the means that you choose, in this example, the template, says also something and conveys some message. So I usually, when I go to conferences that I'm uh, like maybe, more intimidated about, I'll go with a with slide deck that is like techy, um, like blue, green, gray. The slides carnival even has a section for tech. Um, because there's some artistic language that we use in tech. It's usually like geometric things and you know, all these cool colors, things that that looks like uh, startup companies' logos. So I usually do that. I even once like uh, uh, use a, a template that was really fun and colorful and and the main feedback i got is like you can't go on stage with it for like i don't know embedded engineers you look like a girl i don't know so 
you can sometimes do that. And if you have confidence, you can even go on stage with like, I don't know, the, the, on Slides Carnival, she has like a really funny categories. One of them can be like stupid monsters and things that are really, really funny. If, you, if you're confident about doing something like that, like go ahead, like create a, a slideshow that the theme will be, uh, I don't know, slaying the dragons and I don't know, do something funny. You can do that. But I'm just saying, be aware of that. Like do choose that wisely because otherwise it, it could be a really fun uh, slideshow, but maybe it, it's better for, I don't know, cooking and recipes. So just choose it uh, wisely. So this is a bottom line because I think that especially since the conference is, is coming up soon, template is a really, really great place to start. But I'll show you a bit even how we can take that and add to that and eventually even just won't have to use it at all. So what does the template provide? <clears throat> a few simple things that after you see a few of them, you will understand the template. So one of them is a color palette which means just a set of colors that you're choosing. You can see here that um, I have light blue, a bit darker blue, um, yellow, and red, and they're in specific in certain color. And I don't have greens. This is uh, not part of this color palette. Um, it would look at, like a simple thing to choose colors for yourself, but I can tell you it takes a lot of time. I tried a few times. Really, I don't recommend to, to, to choose it yourself. If you want to, what I would do specifically in a, in a Google slide, when you open the sidebar, you already have like grid of colors. So I would just choose like a grid from a specific line and I will go with that. Like I wouldn't start choosing things from scratch. So a template gives you a color palette. It gives you fonts. Usually it will give you at least two fonts. Usually it will be one for the titles and one for the uh, text itself. Uh, it will give you some images sometimes, not all the time. It will give you slides of different types. Um, so let's say a few words of, words about that. Um, when someone is writing his or hers first template, it looks like everything is like tabula rasa and all the slides are white, but it's really not true. Like there's a grid to every slideshow and, and when you use it, it makes everything, excuse me, much, much simpler. You usually need like one slide for the beginning that should look nice because you probably will take pictures with it or you'll make one of your friends taking picture with it, with it so you can upload it to the, to the conference. Sometimes the, the conference asks for you to have uh, the first slide of the conference or with the logo of the conference. And then you have usually uh, a hello, this is who I am slide that some people don't always use. We'll talk about it a bit later. And then you have an agenda slide. And let's say within the agenda, you have three different topics, just for example, then you probably will have also transition, transition slides. And in between, you're gonna have a few slides just like this one that you see some, I don't know, some graphic element on the side, on the top, on the bottom, and, and some places to give you bullets or, you know, some quotes, things like that. So the types are kind of the same. And uh, when you get the idea of it, it actually really helps um, to take your content and, you know, uh, pour it into the slides deck. So uh, the template will give you that already designed. You sometimes will get diagrams. I found that some of them, if they're really basic, like, uh, I don't know, some timeline or flow can work well. And some of them I, I don't use it. There's sometimes, um, I don't know, um, not all of them are so useful, but sometimes you get also uh, diagrams. And sometimes you will also get some icons or icons at the end, Slides Carnival has that. Uh, there are also icons that you can, uh, get, but maybe add some credit for the usage. Uh, I have links for all of that and I'll give you links to that. So that's the basic um, uh, components of a template. And if you can create these of your own, you can create your own template. Again, um, you can also use uh, an existing one. I'll show you now a few of these. So the most important things, the three main things are the images you're going to be choosing, the colors, as we said, and the fonts. And we'll dive a bit deeper to for each and every one of them. We'll start with the colors. What you see here is the color wheels that uh, mm -hmm. each and every one who learns art get to know with the first or second lesson. And I got it here for you just for the concept of a uh, uh, complementary uh, colors, which means that if you have all the primary colors, so if you're going to mix two, let's say we're going to mix the uh, blue and the yellow, we're going to get green. So this is going to be the uh, uh, complete color for 
complementary color for the red. And it's the same going to be for the orange and the blue and for the purple and uh, the yellow. So that's one thing that everyone in arts knows, and it creates a lot of contrast, and you can use it to highlight things. So if you have some color palette with, I don't know, two blues, maybe the other color that you would like you have is, is uh, orangey. And you'll see it everywhere, like the drama that you see here in all of Van Gogh pictures. And if you Google Van Gogh, you'll see he's doing it all the time. The drama is exactly because of these colors, like the red and green or like the yellow. It didn't use your orange because sometimes since the colors are so uh, alike, usually it's also uh, blue and yellow. But the templates will use it all the time and you can use it to highlight um, things and to have more contrast and like more drama. If you want to choose uh, colors of your own, I would recommend what designers do. And there's a few different uh, uh, websites that already gives you color palettes. And on the bottom of this thing, you're going to see the exact uh, RGB color or hex color. And um, as I said before, I think it's even better to take a template and to use the colors of the template than starting this one from scratch. But if you're, I don't know, adventurous, uh, you can do that. If you do that, I would think when I like first, I can tell you that you can like scroll. It's like Instagram. You can scroll forever with these pictures. It's really beautiful. But if you're actually choosing something, take a look and see, do I have a few colors that I that are not light? Because if all the colors are light, really light, it's, it's uh, going to be a bit harder to play with. That's my experience. Another tip I have about colors <clears throat> is to be gentle with your audience eyes. Um, and that means a few things. Sometimes what I do, I don't use the black. I use a really, really dark gray. And sometimes you, you, you just see that when, you know, when someone is sitting for an hour in front of you, especially if it's on LCD screens, then the contrast is really hard for your eyes. So usually on the background, I don't have white. If I want to do white, I'll do some beige, some white with some additional color. The end result just looks more professional and it's really much easier to look at for for longer times. Also, there's a really cool theme of like doing slideshows in dark mode. I, I see that a lot in the recent years, just like we do with our like ID. People does that with a black background. It's more drama black. It's like more, I don't know, prestigious. So uh, think about doing that. But the other hand of that is that you also need to be minded of what is this, the, the place that you're going to be um, um, showing that. Because on some projectors, usually when you don't have a CD screen and you have just you know traditional projectors, like in universities and things like that, um, the colors are getting much, much lighter than what you saw on your computer. So I never use really light colors. Like I, I won't do light uh, yellows. I won't do anything that when, you know, after preparing to the lecture, I will have it on screen and see that no one sees anything. So you do need to have some contrast. And if you know beforehand where you're going to be presenting, that's even better. So not too light. Okay, so we talked about colors and I'll say a few things about fonts. I really like fonts. Um, I really like you have a few of them. I think that if you have at least two, it's much more fun. Even if, you know, a lot of things that I talk about, the audience doesn't really know to point what exactly he sees different. different. But eventually it just looks better and they can't tell why, but you can tell because you chose a few different fonts. So, so do that, play with that. One thing that is really, really important to notice about fonts in general and text when you edit to the slide is that you can't avoid people reading whatever it is you're going to put on the screen. We do it almost automatically. Uh, if you already started reading this uh, tiny snippet here, you see that even if we change all the letters inside of the word, if you get the first one right and the last one right, people can read that. And we just do it automatically. So when you're putting a lot of information um, in front of the audience, and it's also true about animation, like when you have a few points, the, the, if you choose to put all of them right all together or to have them you know, go one by one with the clicker, it's about controlling the audience attention. Now, sometimes I will put all of them first, and I'll do that especially when I don't have time, because doing these clicks, it takes more time, and eventually it adds up to the entire thing. So I, even in this slide, some of the things it was important to me to go line by line, and some of them I, say, I said to myself, okay, they can read all of that, I don't care, I'm going to speak in the background. But it's, 
it's not their fault, it's your fault. And if you're gonna load a lot of information and start talking, it's just gonna be both of them and it's getting frustrating. An additional thing is if you do have to do that, like if you have one big paragraph that you wanna put or some bottom line or really a summary slide, don't mess around with like really weird fonts. It needs to be readable. Otherwise it just hurts in the eyes and you know people get annoyed. And also we have some ways that you can use fonts and you can use colors and you can use capitulation um, like uppercase to emphasize what it is that you wanna say. So do that, like color some of the things. These are the main words that they, the audience will remember if they want to or if they want, don't want to. It's just gonna happen automatically. So use colors, use capital letters, you know, use the, the font size, do everything you can. And then just a simple sentence could be an entire slide. Font sizes, there's a nice joke saying that the font size should be twice as the average participant age. Uh, I found it true. I don't know, I have glasses, but uh, I also know that uh, like in Les PyCon, uh, the recommendation was in some of the rooms and even for all the speakers to take the font size of 35 that I usually use 30 something for the title and 20 something or 18 to, to the actual text. There's also rules saying, you know, take all your slides the same, always make the, the headline the same font and always the bullets the same. I don't do that. Sometimes I just want to enlarge some things and I want to use all the space in the slide. But it is true that if the font will be too small, people won't be able to read it. And if the it's a really big room, also you really need to, to enlarge the font as big as you can. Also, if you pick a few fonts, like I said before, you can use a variation of the font, the, the font itself, just to emphasize something. And also, as you can see here, to highlight the background, it works. And I think the bottom line is don't to, don't use too many of them because then it's just getting messy. I don't know, two of them, one for the titles, one for the text, one for emphasize, that's more than enough. And don't use fonts that are not readable because some of them are really nice. And especially on Google Slides and things like that, the fonts are free, which means that whoever designed them uh, is, I won't say immature because some of them are really good, but some of them are not. So um, choose one, don't choose it just by the name of it because it always looks the name, it looks, looks the best by the name of it. Just put the text on the side and see if it's not readable, replace it. Doesn't matter how you think that the, the, the font is nice or that you are attached to that. Sometimes you have to kill your own darlings and just do whatever is readable for your audience. So use it, but don't overuse it. And again, uh, if you want to shout, uh, use uppercase, it can work well if you just have one idea that you want to convey and, and it creates a slide and eventually you're going to speak whatever you're going to say anyway like you're not going to have all the text laid down right so you just need a point so sometimes the slide can be just a text shouting out okay so this was for text and i can say that there's like a a, a whole uh, 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 approach for slideshows saying don't put text at all and as you can see I'm, I'm not taking this approach, but you can. Um, but let's say a few things about images and then you can choose for yourself. So obviously, like before, I, if you remember, I had some uh, mini transition slide with like uh, a picture of a camera and a picture of a few different things for like the fonts and the things like that. So when I went to OnSplash, which I'll show you later on, and I chose these images, I wanted camera and I saw this one and I saw some simpler one. So before I just wanted to have like a, a mini agenda slide and I didn't want to have a lot of information. So I put a plain and simple camera picture. But here you can see how many layers you have just by choosing the right image. Like you have some something here about, you know, uh, a feminine vibe, both because it's, it's a female, even though you can barely see her, you can see that from our hands and you can see that from the colors. And you also have like, this game of uh, background and foreground here with the focus, like there's so many layers of information that again, just with as with text, we automatically like decipher. So when you choose one image on top of the other, you're saying one thing on top of the other. So it could be, and, and when you're gonna um, search for some keyword in the search engines for, for pictures, you're gonna find so many of these. So be minded of two main things. One of them, does it convey the message that you want? And does the colors match 
the, the, the color palette that you just chose. Because again, that's something that will make the entire presentation look very professional or just, you know, they add, I don't know what I'm saying in English, like almost professional. So there are a lot of, uh, as I said before, there are a lot of uh, advantages to use images. It's really nice and stunning when you find really good ones. You can create a whole theme using that. Like I can give you, for example, uh, I have a friend that I was mentoring for PyCon and she was talking about databases of houses in California. So she ended up having the entire presentation with different pictures of houses in, in California. It was really nice. And the pictures are really in high quality because today you can get them for free. I use on splash, which is the website you see here. I'll give you the links for everything. I use it all the time. I love it so much that I always say when I'm going to have some free time, I'm going to take my pictures and upload them just to give back because they really have great high quality images. So literally you just go search for that. It's really nice to give credit. If you can, if it works well for you in the presentation, just edit on, on the bottom of the link or at the end, when you say, thank you, you can add all the links and that's, that's really nice. And also consider if you want something very specific and it's important for your slide to pay for getting images or for something like that. I think that from time to time, if you want a really good presentation, I don't know, next time you're going to speak at Vegas, I hope for you do that, like uh, go all the way. If you don't find whatever it is that you want on the free websites, I don't think it's a lot of money. And sometimes it's worth uh, investing in, especially if like the company sends you and they have some graphic designer who can help you with that. The message with pictures, with artistic styles, with fonts is don't mix way too many of them. Like, I think this is like the ugliest slide that I could ever had. And I'll tell you why. I know not everyone thinks it's ugly, but it is. For example, if I want to use, if I want to convey some message, I can do it with text. I can do it with images. I can do it with icons. I don't need to do it with all of them together. I don't need to overload. I don't need, even this picture, it's not very focused. Like you can have like a, the red sign here, but also the no entrance sign here. And if you even take a look, there's, I, I, I overload way too many like uh, fonts and styles and things because it's ugly. Just don't do that. Try to be cleaner. And also, if I wanted to use icons, and sometimes there, there is a good reason for that, I would use this red. You see the red here in the, the bottom right? Because if that's the language, the artistic language, and the color palette that I chose, then go, go ahead with it. And if you don't have green and you, you want green, you can add the light blue. And people will understand because people are smart. So just uh, don't mix way too many design languages. <clears throat> OK. So that's all I had to say about fonts, about um, uh, colors, about images, about the way to use them, and in general about templates and uh, the structure of it. I want to give a few specific notes regarding codes and, and the demos. So one of them is code snippets. Uh, you know by now that they will read everything you're going to put uh, on the slide. Don't put anything that you want them, you don't want them to debug for you because engineers will debug your code and they will do code review online and they will, some of them will be upset. Okay. Even if they, it's, it's just like that. So the main guidelines and the, forgive me that this is Python and not C++ is to be minimal, to use all the conventions like full bar variables and to delete everything you don't need to, to have there, even put some sort of code, like they will read everything and debug that. So stay focused, stay on whatever it is that you want to convey in this specific slide. You can break it into multiple slides. Um, but I will say try to add code. Like people like to see code. It's uh, that's that's what they came from for. There are a few tools um, that will uh, make it really nice. You can do some print screens or from your IDE. Um, you can write it yourself like I did before inside the presentation, but there are also some tools. I found that they're really good for like short code snippets because when they get longer, then it just looks less good and it's smaller. And sometimes, as I showed you before, I can control here many more things when I edit everything myself, but sometimes it just looks better. Okay, so one of them calls uh, Carbon. I'll give you the links for everything. The other one is uh, to HTML. It's a uh, great tips that I got from a, um, from a friend. Uh, this one can also highlight things for you in you know different uh, styles according to the language and things like that. And you can also embed this 
if you have a website or you know a blog post or something like that so you can use these tools you can write it yourself and yeah you can do some print screens regarding demos <clears throat> so um one tip that i have for you is a tool that i used to use it really depends on what it is that you're presenting uh, you can see here that's a, a screenshot from a, a meetup that uh, i gave with a wish kid and i learned these tips from him so uh uh, tell him that when you see him next time. The two really different, two different things that you can do that I feel that are really cool. One of them is this is an example for an app that when you download it and then you connect it to your computer, you can see your mobile phone on the screen. So now you're sharing your screen, so everyone can see that, and now you see that on the screen. So I hear what we did. We played with some Bluetooth and small devices like IoT devices. So I could scroll things down and, I, and everyone could see exactly what, I, what I'm doing at, at the same current moment. And they can do it too with their own mobiles and phones. And uh, an extra trick you can do with it is you can use your phone camera that can also zoom in and zoom out and just, I don't know, take picture or take a video of something that is currently running on your desk. And then you can also see that on, you can project that to everyone and everyone can see that much more clearly. An additional thing you can do is to do the same thing with the your laptop's camera. Just turn it on. You have an I don't know in Windows you have application named camera. You can just see that, and then you can also see whatever you see here. You're gonna display that on the screen, and everyone can see that. So that's one thing that I use and is uh, very cool. And the next tip I have for you is whether if you're doing something hands-on or if you're gonna do some live coding, have a small uh, offline a video, like not connected to the internet with a backup. The first thing it does is just to remove the pressure. Like so many things can go wrong. And especially if you have a, a you know, room crowded with a lot of people looking at you, you'll get much, much more nervous if I don't know, some there's problem with the electricity or something went wrong, or I don't know exactly what is, but things can go wrong. So if you have a, a short video that you know that looks really good, you can start by, doing, by trying to do the live demo. And if there's something wrong, you can say, you know what? This is not working. All is good. I have a backup. Let's look at it. And record the demo as if you are now presenting it, because that's the look and feel you want to give to the audience. So one is technical and the other is psychological, but both of them works when you have an offline uh, um, recording of whatever it is that you want to do. Again, if you were doing some live coding, um, you can record the, the, the screen. You can do it with Zoom like we're doing now. You can do it with uh, the, the gamer uh, application that you have on Windows. Like, it's not a, a problem to record your own screen and whatever it is that you want to display. OK, so um, I'll take some questions now about this and uh, whatever you feel like asking. And then we can go over some examples. And then we have some conclusions. So yeah, I'm uh, listening. Yeah, um, I wonder what, how do I prepare a, a, a presentation which is meant for both online and uh, on-site uh, delivery on two different occasions? Uh, something that looks both looks well on uh, both and uh, both setups and is especially um, for um, on-site is a is a dark background possibly a bad idea in terms of visibility? I'm not sure. I've seen a few. Uh, it is true that on LCD it's better, but if the contrast is good enough, some of the Google Slides templates are, uh, you can say, dark mode or like dark background. I, I don't see a lot of difference in that. Like if the presentation looks good and people see that online, they will just see it better. Uh, and the people in the, the same room will just have a better feel of, you know, you giving the presentation in the room. I think it, what needs to be more concerned about is like the technical issues of like other people not closing their their cameras or the sound if the sound is not so good when you do something hybrid i think this is what needs to be to pay more attention to but regarding the slides i think it's it's the same i have a comment on uh dark backgrounds when projecting on site a mm -hmm. lot of times projectors do not have the proper amount of lumens. And if you do a dark background, light thin fonts are not gonna show up well. Therefore, a light background may work a lot better in person, a lot on a projector. 
Thanks. It's a, that's a good point. Just like not being too light with it. But if you know that you're going to be in a room with LCD, maybe it can work. I don't know what you know beforehand. But yeah, it's a good point. Other comments, some tips you want to share, questions? Or I can show you some examples. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm doing the coding sessions, um, I, I usually bring the code I want to print to 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 type printed in a huge font. It, it's very important that the huge the font will be huge because inside the lecture you can't really start picking stuff. You, you you're too stressed and you're too your attention is too divided. So you're handing out papers? No 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 no. Oh, I, okay. I I, I, just, I, I I type it on screen. But uh, I'm, I'm but the biggest font that could be. But but uh, I'm uh, my prepared text is printed on paper. Oh, in huge font. So <laughs> I get, and and that works because the font can be too small on screen either, so people will be able to see it. Great, thanks. It's a good one. Um, if you're going to be doing a live coding rather than doing a whole bunch of typing, keep it in a notepad off on the side and just cut and paste it in. Otherwise, you will have typos that will be incredibly hard to find. And you don't want people to be staring at you, telling you you missed a semicolon or what. And also, it will take less time just because typing takes time. Right. And also, it's much less stressful. That's a really good tip. Also, your example of doing the pre-recorded, if you have a lot of uh, coding involved in there, when you pre-record it, record it all, and then do the typing and fast forward. And so compress that time. So it looks like you're typing, you know, 200 words a minute. And yeah, so that you it, need like to to a bit to edit, right? Like you need some uh, software for that. Right. That's cool. Okay, great. Any last comment, question, or can we go along? Okay, so I'll continue showing some examples. All of these are from, I don't know, all of these are, are my presentations from the recent years. So you can see that some of them are much better than the others, but I'll show you uh, the process. This is just saying something about a template. Like it looks completely different or like at least it has a different look and feel. And all I did was changing the template. And uh, like, this one is slides carnival, this one is slides carnival, the, the same one I'm using now. I'll show you these two. This is without any template at all. It's just the same slide, just highlighting the, the same exact things actually. And this is what I can manage, I'll show you now. But, and, and I'll take this slide to say something about that. I heard a lot of speakers that doesn't have this, hello, this is who I am. I, I, uh, I give mentor, mentoring to a lot of uh, female engineers and sometimes maybe it's due to insecurities and like just having some, uh, uh, some difficulties to put yourself on stage. But I think it's really important, like you need a few minutes in the beginning so people will remember who you are to say something about yourself to introduce yourself. Eventually people will remember and say, you know, I, I heard uh, the flan, the uh, C++. It's, I think it's an important one. And if you are thinking about dropping it out, please reconsider. Okay, <laughs> so that's a, a presentation from a workshop. Uh, the, it was going over the Circuit Playground Express, which is a really nice board by Adafruit. This is just a simple slide deck, dark mode. It was, I gave it in, in Zoom. You can see that it's, it's pretty basic. Like the, the timeline as we so, spoke, it doesn't have any transition slides. Uh, it doesn't even have an agenda, it's a workshop. Um, but it has a few like materials and backgrounds, like really few of them. And then most of it is like, when we talked about time and space, this is going over space. It's like space in, in the terms of uh, the different sensors and the different abilities and highlighting, highlighting uh, each and every part of the device and then going over it. So this is like a space one. And it, it literally has nothing. I didn't even chose the colors smartly, which today maybe I would have used, that's a logo of Circuit Python. Never mind. It's a Python for microcontrollers. So if I would do it now, I would just choose these two colors just for the titles and it would make it much much better much more professional you can say this is also just choosing colors 
This time, again, I almost did nothing. Print screens, IDEs, this is what Arduino. But I did choose the color according to the Arduino logo. So I could just choose, I don't know, red, but it won't be wise because it looks much more professional when you match yourself to all the print screens and the IDE print, print screens that you can see here. So it's really a minor decision, but it's better than choosing any other color. This is the lecture I gave last year in course C++. It's also just choosing colors, no templates, but the colors here are the MLIR, which is a framework logo. I literally went with paint and I saw what exactly are the colors. They actually even have it online. And, and I did a bit smarter here. You can see that I learned a few things. And I have like transition slides uh, to remind myself what I'm doing. When I use some diagrams, I use the, for the diagrams the same colors. But again, this is no template at all. Like you can say maybe this, this is a bit templated. You see, I have like a, a banner on the bottom, but like it's the same. And it looks much better than before due to the usage of the same colors each and every time I could just to use the a specific color palette, you can say, because I have here like light blue, uh, like darker blue, white, and some gray. So it's, you can say it's a color palette because it's more than one, more than two. So this is even a bit better. This is also choosing colors. This time you see the colors are just like the one that I showed you in the beginning from the wheel. And there's much more contrast when I choose the yellow and the, the blue. And also a black and white. So we have four already. And also I used the logo that we had over the event. It was also a, a coding event. And I created a template, one slide template, and I use it all the time. So it looks a, a bit more like a template, even though I created it again with paint and I just, created one of these. This is Slides Carnival. So now it looks much, much better with much less effort on my side. Um, again, I just chose something that with the colors of the Arduino and she had a few and I could choose one of them. So now I even needed to, to have less effort, but it looks even better. So I do have some pictures that I added here maybe, and this picture is nice. And there are a lot of pictures of the device itself that also makes the presentation looks good. But eventually what works here is the template. This is also slide carnivals, uh, this time it's in Hebrew. I gave some lecture to high school kids and I wanted it to look like uh, nice and shiny. And again, like the, the, the slide is so beautiful that I really didn't need to, to do a lot. So here I combine two different things. It's, um, again, it's a presentation in Hebrew. It's about dreams, okay? The, the, the only thing here that is not techy. But what I did, I chose colors and I didn't just go on black and white. I took this orange <clears throat> and sometimes when I needed to create transition slides or if I needed some fill up for some presentations, I needed it for the contrast here. So I used the same slide. So it's a bit like I have some color palette. And I also created some um, template slides of, on, on my own. Like when I put this uh, line over here, which is nice or the upper one, I just chose one picture, which is with the same colors of the fonts and all the nice pictures that makes the presentation what it is, is due to the uh, high quality of the images themselves. So I think it looks just as good as a template, but the reason now is the images. And here I did exactly the same, but this time it's all tech. It was like IoT presentation that I gave that was like in, in some relation to agriculture. So I just took pictures of plants for the, you know, the opening slide and the transition slide. And I created like light green um, for the bottom or for, for the top one. I'll show you after the, when we finish the lecture, I can show you some hands on of how to do that. But I think it looks like a template, like a ready template. And again, that's just because I chose colors that are related, you know, greenery and things like that. And I use really good on special um, images. So, some things are really technical, but some of them is just the transition side. It's just a nice one. It just pops everything out. It's nature. It has nothing to do with tech. And it, I think it, uh, it really upgrades the presentation. So this is everything I told you on steroids. This is exactly the presentation that I, that I give right now. Uh, it's what I did. I took this template, which is fun and light, and I like the colors. And then I chose a theme that I created named colors, which is searching in on splash for colorful images, picking only the bright ones. 
like you can you can find some of the colors that are a bit I don't pastel like you can say or a bit more gray. I only took the ones that are really bright and shiny, and I use the template. You see that it has some grid here, and this is from the original template. She had some picture with a black and the designer of on splash. She had something here like a I don't know it was like a tigress or something with black and white, and I just replaced it with with colors. And it also works well. This is a a, a tech blogging. Uh, um, presentation that I sometimes give. It's also fun and creative, and the theme is, you know, soft skills, so it works well for me. And I think it's really doing a, a good job to combine. Someone already chose the colors, he did it well, he chose the grid well. I could also use like the nice slides like this one that is a, a quote slide that she designed, the, the, the designer of uh, On Space Design, and I can also add all these like really beautiful pictures from On Space. So some of the tools I talked about, I have a summary here. You can get the slide. And um, obviously, as you can see, I'm not a native English speaker. I check my English all the time with different types of uh, grammar checkers. I don't want to recommend one on top of the others, but there's a lot of one on the internet. Uh, for the titles, I use Capitalize My Title, which is a really fun tool. If you're not a native English speaker, maybe you don't know the rules for that. And when I want to do a slide and I'm, I'm getting really lazy, like when I do the shout one and I want all the letters to be Capitalize, there's a convert case tool. You can do all different of cases, like common case, upper case, lower case. I just use that because I'm lazy. It's a great tool. One click and you have it. Uh, I use a lot of side carnivals. There's a lot of built-in um, templates, as I said before, and they also have some extra resources. But again, you need to take a look at all of these at the license and to give the right credits and all that, or you know, pay for that whenever needed. Uh, the color palettes are the website that I showed before, so that's also a link you have here. I use Onsplash all the time. It's getting better and better for my, every time I use it because so many people are donating to that, but there are also other options. There's also Canva, and a lot of people are using this tool for their slides, and they have stunning results. I don't have uh, experience with this tool, so I can't share with you, but I know that if you're looking for other alternatives, Canva is a really good one. Okay, so I have like eight more minutes and I'm gonna just give you my uh, top tips and tricks and things I gathered along the way. I guess most of you know some of them, but maybe some of them you don't. I wanna remind again, what is the bottom line for all of this? It's not about creating a really nice and stunning presentation that you'll hand in later. It's really about cultivating the learning process for the listeners, for the audience that came and you know spend their time uh, on your presentation. As I said before, there are a few things that can help with that. I think some of them just regarding if we we'll, if we'll regard now the presentation part and not just the slides is sometimes to state the obvious, but to do it in a respectful way, because you'll get all the time that some of the people in the audience have more experience than you and they can teach you. So you, you I don't think we should come from a, a place of like um, authority. I see myself you can see it right now like i have some knowledge and i want to share that i want to give that knowledge to you i see the same i see it the same way when i give uh, presentations but sometimes you do need to say the obvious because you'll have juniors in the in the crowd or you have someone who uh, learned programming on his own and he didn't want to computer science school so sometimes you just need to say you know as we all know or as we all learned in our bachelor's degree and maybe not all but when you're just going to say it in a respectful way everyone will listen and and everyone will be with you. Like we do this thing to make everyone aligned. So some of the people won't fall behind, just not understanding maybe something that you were assuming. I talked a lot about summarizing points. I truly think it's helpful. Uh, do that yourself too. Um, and try to summarize some of the main points in your own words. Like I, I feel that the, the learning that I get from creating presentation is this wisdom of like, oh, I didn't understand that until I need to explain it to someone else. So sometimes you have really good insights. If you're gonna summarize them, if you're gonna you know, also write them down, you'll see people uh, taking the cameras on and uh, you know, taking pictures because they wanna save it for themselves. Uh, the little things that you took some time to maybe write and then rewrite again. And that's a tip that is really an emotional issue. Like, I don't like when people just point out bad things to me. 
even if there are bad things in the industry that maybe this lecture is all about. Like, I just like to give some positive note at the end, or it's like handling the emotional side of the audience. Like you said, okay, A and B are bad, but I have a solution. Or maybe it's a hard problem that we don't have a solution for. So maybe you can say something like, you know, that's a really big problem, but now when you're listening and when we're talking about it, that's one step to solve that. So I think even if it's, you know, tiny things like, people are not uh, using the coding guidelines, or if it's a really big thing, like, I don't know, gender biases in the entire industry. If you're saying something bad, try to see how you can be optimistic in your approach regarding the problem. And do anything else you can do to make the, the audience learn in a playful way, because one thing that we do is, you know, to learn, but you know for yourself, when you come to a conference and you sit from I don't know, nine o'clock in the morning to four o'clock in the afternoon, you get tired. And we, I think that as speakers, we need to educate people, but then also in, entertain them. So if you can do both, that's, that's the best thing, in my opinion. Again, regarding performance, um, just be prepared, do some dry runs, get some feedbacks. Um, I did a dry run yesterday for this talk, even though I already had it in Hebrew a few times, but it's the first time that I'm giving it in English. So I recorded myself and recording ourselves is really good, both because I now have a recording, even though we now have a second one. Um, but also what I sometimes do, and I used it when I was giving a, conf a talk in a conference in Berlin, I recorded myself after like, you know, preparing to that. And then I listened to that on the flight. So I could just relax in the fight. There was no good movie and listen to myself. And it was really helpful for me um, just to be more prepared to the talk. Again, especially like when you're speaking non-native language that it's, it's harder than, and it's, uh, I think it's harder to improvise if you're missing something out. An additional tip that I got and I use sense is to memorize the first five minutes. Um, because that's the most stressful one. You see everyone, sometimes the, the room is really crowded. Sometimes you look at someone and you don't think, is he happy about what I'm saying? <laughs> so just to memorize the first five minutes is, is a, a good thing. Afterwards, you're gonna be in flow anyway, and you know things are gonna run on their own. Um, some more tricks that maybe can help uh, whoever is a beginner here. Again, it's a personal note, I'm really into loving the audience, appreciating the fact that they had a few tracks and they chose to come and see your track uh, or your lecture. Um, I know that spe specifically in tech, there are a lot of people, some may call them trolls, that maybe will point out, you know, the things that you were wrong about, or maybe ask questions just to show that, you know, they know more than you. We can't deny that sometimes these things happen. I think that just to have a positive uh overview on all of that and see that in general most of the people in the audience appreciate the fact that you took your time uh, and sometimes creating a presentation can take hours and hours and you took the time for them and most of the people will appreciate that and they will come and say thank you and just to bear that in mind and not the ones that may be problematic i think will give you uh, a better feeling when you go on stage there's a, a thing called power posing Google it. Uh, Amy Cuddy is talking about it. I use it all the time when I'm stressful before important things and presentation. And there are two nice things regarding fear itself. One of them is this nice thing of fear is face everything and recover. I sometimes remind that to myself when I'm scared. And also there's this issue about um, taking a look at this like subtle anxiety and reinterpreting that not as fear, but as excitement. Like, I created this talk. Uh, I love this conference. People are coming and sharing knowledge here, and that's great. What I feel right now is excitement and not fear. That's also helpful, I think, in the first few minutes that you memorized. Yeah, and that's uh, <clears throat> some, you know, slide of like, come prepare. Like, even for this Zoom talk, I need to shut down all the notifications that maybe pop out. Uh, I have something on my screen that turns everything red once it's like seven o'clock in the evening. So I need to turn it off, even though I know you can see that, but uh, I can see that and it can, it can interfere with me. So I need to do all of this. I need to make sure that my uh, headphones were charged, all these little things that will make you come prepared. And no, also, 
um, one thing I do is keep a different user for presentations. Oh, and that's I also so cool. set the DPI there to, to lower so that everything is automatically bigger. That's really cool. That's a really cool tip. I, uh, I never thought about it. That's really great. Um, and uh, one last thing that I want said to say about this slide is uh, one more tip. We talked about highlighting things beforehand, but also another tip uh, is that sometimes when people write bullets, they write it in like different ways. Like they can do charge your laptop, but then uh, I don't know, uh, notifications should be turned off. I don't know. So if you want to say something authoritative, make sure that you write it in the right way or just make sure that in a way everything is uh, written in the same form when you write bullets. A lot of people doesn't do that and I get annoyed. So I uh, just wanted to use this slide to say that as well. So yeah, my last point is it can take a lot of time um, choose wisely. I don't think that every presentation, as I showed you, not every workshop that I give, I spend a lot of time creating, uh, you know, all the all the different things that you can do to enhance the, the slides. Choose wisely whatever you want to invest in, uh, see how much time you have. And after you did that, like, try to enjoy the show. Like, eventually, when you're just going on the stage, there's nothing else you can do better. And I, I feel that, as I said before, when you, when you enjoy it, people uh, sense that. And everything is much more fun than just getting uh, anxious about the crowd. So yeah, thank you for listening for an hour and one minute exactly now. <laughs> um, if you have any more questions or if you want to go over some of the slides, maybe we can turn off the recording now in Bound and then can have some uh, offline talk. <laughs>